Welcome to a tutorial on a package called Freezed. So this was recently Flutter's uh, plugin of the week or something like that, and I looked into it and thought it was a fantastic idea. Uh, the purpose is, is that it cuts down boilerplate when you are making models and, well, classes of any sort, where very, very often what you need to do is override the hash code and make a hash code, override the double equals to decide how it's equal, and then make a copy with method, uh, which is a popular a flutter dart kind of pattern where you can mutate just one field that's final by copying everything about that field and putting it in a new value and then you get a new instance. And when you do that for a whole lot of different classes, the amount of code that you actually need to write is very, very substantial. And it's almost always identical, like your, your equality is just checking if it's the same type and then checking every field. Um, your two string is maybe just printing every field to console for yourself. And then your copy with is just for cloning in one value at a time. And uh, this can all be generated code, and that's what freeze does. So freeze generates us all that code in a file uh, called filename.freezed.dart, and it's an awful lot like JSON serializable and JSON annotation, um, and you can use them together as well. So this is really, really, really powerful stuff. So uh, what I'm going to do is go over an example project uh, with some modeling, and what I mean by modeling is imagine that you had this thing from users from JSON placeholder API, right? and you're gonna turn this into a Dart class. Well, what you would need to do is this is one user. You would need to declare final int ID, name, username, all of these things. You need to define this class. You need to define a geo class. You need to define a company class. And then for each one of those, you would need to write a double equals, a hash code, a string, and a copy with, and it then um, declare all of the JSON keys if you wanted the variable name to be different than what is provided here, or if something could be nullable, then you need to tell JSON serializable how that's going to work. Uh, so overall, just a huge amount of work, and we um, can cut that down to an incredibly small amount of code, and then just generate a file for ourselves with Freezed. So these are the four plugins that we're going to be using. We're going to be using Freezed, and it's Freezed annotation. Uh, they go hand in hand, just like JSON serializable and JSON annotation. Um, so what we're going to do is just go into our pubspec.yaml and add freezed annotation and JSON annotation as real dependencies. And then in our dev dependencies, we are going to need freezed JSON serializable. And then to generate the build, uh, generated files, what we're going to do is use build runner. Um, so before we go into how to use it, there is one syntax that it uses quite heavily that I didn't really know about. So we're just going to look at that. First, so it uses this idea of redirecting constructors. So I got a very small test file here to show what that means. So the syntax in question is this right here, and this might look a little weird. So we have this um, example class. It's got an int a and a string b, and it has a private constructor. It's private because it starts with an underscore, and it's just a named constructor there. Uh, but you can't call that from anywhere other than this class because it's private. So we do have a public constructor, and this is a factory constructor. And what we can do is just say, well, this public constructor has the same inputs as this one. It takes in an int a, like this one, and a string b. And we can just redirect that uh, constructor with the equal sign and just say this one is this. Uh, so this looks a little bit weird. But basically, when you put this in here, it's redirecting it, and it goes up here. So we can see that when we go here. So example class.public, and we run that, and it, sh it should print. This should print when calling forward to private, and it does. Now, there is one catch with this is that the arguments need to be identical. So I have this line commented out here. Here we see that private2 has the order swapped. It takes the string first and then the int. And we cannot forward these around if they are mismatched. So if they're mismatched in the wrong order, it's not going to work. It's going to tell you that um, you can't redirect with these parameters are incompatible. So if we swap these around, then it would work. All right, so pretty simple, but um, the plugin freezed relies on this quite heavily, and it's a, kind of a rare syntax. I had never actually seen that before. So let's go into one of our models here and look at what a freezed class looks like, or a class is going to use it. So here is our user model, and what we're going to do is use a mixin with this generated class here. So when you first write this file, this is not going to exist. You know what? Maybe I'll delete all of the generated files so and generate them again so that we can see what it looks like when you're writing them. So when you're writing them, most things are not going to compile uh, because these files don't exist yet. This class doesn't exist yet. Your user from JSON doesn't exist yet either. Um, but what we're going to do is just write this out. So 
We're going to use our class user. This is the name that we actually want. And then we are going to annotate this class with freezed up here. We're going to use a mixin, and I think this is actually should not compile. I'm not sure why there isn't a red squiggly there, but this mixin does not exist yet. And this mixin is going to be the class that houses all of the variables, and it's going to have our final int ID, final string name, all this stuff. And it's also going to have ultimately all of our to and from JSON because we can use freeze and JSON serializable at the same time. So if we want it to be JSON serializable, what we got to do is annotate this factory constructor with JSON serializable. And this actually causes an annotation issue with JSON serializable. Um, it says you, oh, sorry. Let's not ignore this. And it's gonna say this doesn't go here, uh, but freeze know that it knows that it does go there. So you can just ignore that. Um, and then we do have to write out a factory constructor for the from JSON, which is gonna forward it to our um, user from JSON, which isn't generated yet. Um, so with just this code, Right, so 10 lines, we're gonna get a user class that has a final int ID, a final string name, a final daytime birthday, and a final company company. And it's going to have two JSON from JSON and a copy width and a quality that checks every field and also a two string, which is going to print every field. And you can see that this company is also a class that I've defined up here. So here's company. Um, so you gotta remember to put these part because part of these files are going to live somewhere else. So we need a part for the freeze part and a part for the, comp uh, for the JSON part. Um, this one has a little bit different. It's got this JSON key here. So if you wanted to specify how this JSON key is supposed to work, this list of offices, we're saying that if this comes over from the server as null, our default value is gonna be an empty list. So we're expecting sometimes the offices key to not exist, or maybe it comes back explicitly as null. Either way, we want in our Dart code this to default to an empty array. Likewise, this is going to complain at you because this isn't where this annotation normally goes, but freeze understands what this means and will generate us the proper file. And then we have the location which the company has. So the company has a list of offices. So here's a location. It's got a latitude and longitude. Similarly, if you wanted the um, variable name to just be lat, but you know from the server, it's gonna come across as latitude as the key in JSON, then you can change the name there so I know that my server is going to return this under the key latitude, but I want to call it lat. Okay, so let's generate these files and see what pops out. Um, so that I've put in the readme here, the command to do so. So we just need to use the typical build runner command here. So flutter packages, pub run, build runner build. And then I like to pass this flag here so that it completely regenerates everything. So I paste that in here and build it. And that's gonna build us six files. It's gonna build us two for company, two for location, and two for user. And we're gonna peek into those and see what they have. Okay, so it doesn't seem to think that .g got generated, but it definitely did. There's our user. Okay. So we have this um, generated mixin here. So let's look at what that is. So here's user.freeze. Let's start at the top here. So it's got a whole bunch of stuff that isn't too important to us. Let's go down to the mixin. So we can see that it has a getter for every single one of the fields. And it's going to assume that everything that's in that model is final. So if we go down to the real class, it actually has the final stuff in it. I think it's at the very bottom. Here is our generated file, the generated private user, and that has what we would expect here for our final int ID, our final string name, our final string birthday, company. Here's our two string uh, with all of the fields. Here is our equality, so it checks if it's identical and the same type, and then other, that seems a bit redundant, it checks if it's the same type again, I guess. And then it does a deep quality on every single field. It does similarly, it does object.hash for the hash code, and then it has a copy with method that is um, up here. So the copy with, I don't understand what's going on here with this generated code, but basically you can go copy with and then change one field. So what that would look like is this. You could go, um, make a user. 
and then we can go user dot copy with and then pass in whatever field we want. So if we want to change the name, then we get a name parameter here, new name like that. And that would return us a new user with only the name modified with all the other um, fields the exact same. Okay, so let's hop into the user from JSON. So we have the user from JSON here, and that's ultimately this guy, which is ultimately a this guy. Oh, I might need to restart my cache. Sometimes when you rebuild the files, it doesn't realize that it actually built them. So I'm just going to invalidate my caches and restart. And hopefully we'll see those .g files in there. Okay, now it properly understands that these were actually built. Sometimes when you generate a whole bunch of files at once, your IDE, IDE gets a bit confused. So just invalidate your caches and restart and it should be all good. So if we go to our user.g, this is what we've seen from other tutorials that I've made where we're uh, serializing stuff from the internet uh, JSON here. So it's taking all of the fields based on the key that it thinks and the types that it thinks and putting it into our generated class. And th this stuff gets a little wonky. It's like a generated, generated method. Um, but don't need to worry about it too, too much. So let's look at one of the ones that we made some customization to to make sure it worked. So the company, we said the offices is supposed to have a default value of an empty list. So let's go into here and make sure that worked. So it's offices as a nullable list of dynamic. And if it exists, then we are mapping it from JSON. Otherwise, it's an empty list. So that looks good. Let's look at another one. So the location, we said that longitude and latitude are supposed to have the keys of latitude and longitude. And the latitude, I've just put a default value of 100. So we go location.g. We can see latitude is a um, the key there. And it has a default value of 100. And this one has no default value. It will just um, force it to be not null. Um, so yeah, if you, if you watch my other tutorials, we have made these copy with methods and the two string for state classes and view models and models and stuff like that. And it's just an enormous amount of code. And I will definitely be using this package a whole bunch in the future because um, just how little you actually need to write, right? Like this is just my entire user class with all that baked into it. If you have inequality and a copy with and all that stuff like this user.freeze file, it's not as concise as it could be because it's got some weird generated stuff, but it's over 200 lines long. Whereas the code that I've written just declared the fields and got everything that I want, and it's only 10 lines. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will definitely be using it in my own projects and future tutorials.